So I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos recently and I'm getting very jealous of people's mini panels that they use for DaVinci Resolve. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can afford one of them at the moment because I've got my eye on one of those uh, things that links via SDI out and I've also got 67 guitars, three 6K Pro cameras, an Ursa 12K and an original 4K production camera and I just seem to spend my money on equipment oh, and, and then there's the Mac and the endless amounts of hard drives I need to use to store all the B-RAW. So I thought to myself, I can't afford a mini panel at the moment, but what else can I do? So I started looking up whether DaVinci Resolve can be controlled by MIDI controllers or something like that. And there was a, a device that someone's made that's a bit cheaper, that's only a few hundred pounds, that kind of does what it does. But I'm a geek, so I did what anyone else would do in that situation. You want to get high? And I had a good long think about it. You have to think of something fast, and getting high makes you smart. And I thought to myself, I can solve this. I've got an old Behringer controller. I've got a, uh, I forgot what it is, it's a BCF 2000 or something like that. It's, here it is, here's the controller. I thought, what if I could get that to control DaVinci Resolve? And I thought, well, if I bodge it, because I'm good at bodging things, I can get it to do it because I can just write a script that intercepts the MIDI controls and then clicks the mouse in the right place and does the bits and pieces, which is very rudimentary, but it's better than not having any controller at all. So here's the little script I wrote. It just uses the Easy MIDI and the Robot JS uh, packages. And basically I've got a load of pixel positions and things I want to do. And then it intercepts the controllers and clicks things and does whatever. I mean, if you want to read that, then pause the video and read it, but it's not that interesting. What is interesting is uh, a bit of footage here that I've got. And if I put my hand on the controller and tu start turning knobs, ah, oh, there's my lift. If I press it, it resets. There's my gamma. If I press it, it resets. There's my gain, up and down. If I press it, it resets. There's my offset. I've got my temperature here, color temperature. I've got my uh, tint on there. I've got contrast on there. And finally, the last one there, I've got saturation. So it definitely can do what I want it to do. And then I've got these buttons here that I've uh, mapped to be able to open up certain different bits of the color page as I want. And, and my plan is, is actually to make it so that I can select a page and then it will reassign all these knobs to whatever specific bit of the color page that I'm using. But I haven't got to that bit yet. I was too excited. I just want to share this with the world because that's what happens when you do something this cool. You just want to share it with people. So um, yeah, very quick video, but um, yeah, this is one of those things that will only ever work on my PC because I'm mapping all the pixel locations and whatever like that. Um, but when I've got a bit further on with it, I will put the code up somewhere. And if you want to repurpose it for your own MIDI device or whatever, then then, it's a bit of fun, but yeah, I've got my own um, homemade mini panel. <laughs> Thanks, Behringer. <laughs>